Hello, my name is Mike Pfaff, and this is my YouTube channel, Living in the Illusion. Now, the last couple of videos, we talked about affirmations. And this will be the third in that series, and I'll reference uh, up above the links to those other two videos, because they will be helpful in understanding this uh, video on affirmations. Uh, I've often looked at a lot of YouTube uh, videos uh, around affirmations, and uh, it's 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 my understanding from what I saw is that first of all, it's very simplistic how it is brought forward, whether it's affirmations or vision boards. And they all relate to manifesting. We want to manifest something in the outside world that's going to reflect back to us. So we are putting it out there and wanting to have it reflected back to us. And the main goal of this process is happiness. So the processes of affirmations is to, <clears throat> as, as it's worded in many of the YouTube channels, uh, to manifest in the outside world affects things and then they will come back to us and we'll be happy. So we're expecting things on the outside of us to make us happy. <clears throat> now part of that process is to start with uh, an affirmation. And now here is where it gets a little sticky. You are using the affirmation process right now. And it's your best thinking and your best op, uh, affirmations that you've been using has brought you right to where you are right now. You, through your actions, through your uh, beliefs, through your experiences, are affirming the world you have right now. Now, is it happy? Because that's our main goal, that we would be happy. So if you're watching this video to learn about affirmations, <clears throat> to change your outside world so you would be happy inside, you're getting the world that you're asking for. Now I'm going to use a strange combination. The universe is answering your affirmations right now. <clears throat> Are they making you happy? Well, if you're interested in finding out about affirmations, it basically says you're not happy and want something different. So your, what you are affirming right now has got you exactly what you have. That's the truth. That's not what you want, but that is the truth. Now you say you want to use an affirmation to excite the universe to give you something different from the outside so that you'll be happy inside. Logically, that, that doesn't make sense when you, when you lay it out, when you think about it. Uh, 
So if we start the process, you are exactly where you should be based upon the affirmations that you are using right now. You're exactly where you should be. Now you say you want to be someplace else. And so you're going to create an affirmation to excite the universe to give you something different. And then you'll be happy. So you're going to do happy thoughts to, because the universe in kind will bring to you those things to match your happy thoughts. Now here's the thing to recognize. When you use an affirmation in the beginning, I'll say that again. When you create an affirmation to use in the process in the beginning, it's a total lie. It's a total lie because it's not you. You're not affirming you. You are affirming something that you don't have that you would like to have. So when you first say it, the inner part of you, your inner program, will say absolutely, because it's self-talk. An affirmation is self-talk. You're talking to yourself. You're trying to convince yourself. In the beginning, it's an out and out lie. That's why you have to repeat it and repeat it and repeat it and then repeat it again and then do it again until you begin to recognize from the outside universe uh, evidence, proof that the outside universe is giving you some things, some changes in what it usually gives you. So that's basically what you're doing. If you look real close, you'll find out it has nothing to do. The affirmation has nothing to do with the outside universe. What it has to do with is reprogramming your internal subconscious mind and your belief system. Now, they usually don't talk about that. They usually don't talk that you are trying to reprogram your subconscious mind. Oh, how different is that? So already we've stepped away from uh, the traditional way, uh, you might call it pop psychology way of looking at affirmations. Now, I, I alluded to the fact in, in the other videos that the wording of the affirmation is very important to its success or its failure. So we will take a look at that in a little different way of understanding how the subconscious mind operates and how it takes in information and filters it. And what it leaves out and what it lets in. Again, do you get the idea that the process is maybe not as straightforward of <clears throat> thinking happy thoughts now and then, that there is a system behind how this works. So we'll be talking a little bit about that. By the way, I, I have this, uh, this is, I'll, I'll blow it up a little bit so you can see it. And, and we'll talk about the diagram that's on the front of this. This is, this is a little, uh, I used to make little booklets to pass out for my clients when we were working with affirmations. And so I, I changed it around a little bit. It's about 20 pages long. And it has about three pages of affirmations, examples of affirmations 
for different aspects that you might be wanting to change. Yourself, self-esteem, relationships, both at work and love relationships, family relations, all, all, several different kinds of uh, using affirmations. So this is going to be fun and, uh, and a little different approach. And it's still going to take a long time, maybe another uh, video, to get the foundation of using affirmations as a method of changing your world. Affirmations do work. There's no question about it. They do work. But they do not work the way you've been led to believe they work. So let's see if we can find another path down this uh, rocky road to being happy. Uh, so in a minute, we will be right back. We're well, back uh, and we have our subject for today, uh, Affirmations Part 3. But underneath is the process. So we're going to talk more specifically about the process of how affirmations can be used to change your life. Of course, if you like your life, then this will just be interesting, but you don't have to do it. So, uh, as we stated before, affirmations are statements that we are affirming. And that's the way our life is right now. Affirmations are actually beliefs. Your affirmation is uh, that, oh, of course, it's uh, not to your conscious mind. It's from your subconscious mind. Your affirmations that you keep saying to the universe and getting you back what you are getting right now, the process works perfect. The problem is you don't like what you're getting back. And so you are saying, oh, I got to change this. I got to change this and do something else because I want to get something better back from the universe. Great. <clears throat> How are you going to do it? Well, what are you sending out now? Your dominant thoughts of how you believe your world is, your truth for you. And where are they coming from? Your subconscious mind. Because that's where all your beliefs are. You have the world the way you have it right now because of the beliefs that you have that are you are radiating out and getting back in kind. Affirmation process works great. Oh, now you want something different back. Oh, you're going to have to change something. You're going to have to change something. What do you got to change? Your programming in the subconscious mind. How did you put your programming in the subconscious mind in the first place? See how these are interrelated? You put your core belief systems in place before the age of seven. Now, how did you do that? Uh, and we talked about that before. Two main ways that you put all your belief systems, all your core beliefs in place. Repetition and altered states 
called hypnosis. Now we've gone over hypnosis a little bit. They're all interrelated, but we're going to talk about repetition because that is what affirmation process is. You get, you create an affirmation that basically is a program that you're inducing into the subconscious mind by repetition over and over and over and over and over until your subconscious mind reaches up and says, oh, things have changed. That's my new belief now. And then that deeper part of you will radiate to the universe, if that's the way you want to think of it, radiate to the universe a different uh, thought process, a different thought process. So right now, I'm going to draw two squares. Oh, how exciting is this? <clears throat> and that was on the face of that uh, brochure that I wrote. By the way, that, uh, that brochure, you can't see it too well. Uh, I'll hold it up again. Uh, the, the, the grounding place of this is uh, uh, called Rational Emotional Behavioral Therapy. That was the foundation. Uh, and uh, I started using it when I was in uh, Germany. I was in Germany for about a year and a half, and I did some volunteer work while I was there and came up with this uh, brochure. So, now, these, these two squares, if you can see them, and I hope you can on my little board, uh, represent your world outside. This is the outside. We always seem to talk about the outside and the inside. Your world. Your world. Outside of you. And it matches, it matches exactly <clears throat> your inside belief. system. What's your belief system? Your outside world and your inside belief system match each other. They support each other. You might not have known that. Now, if you don't like your outside world, it's because of what you're doing inside. So, if you want to change your outside world, and that's what manifesting is, changing the outside so you feel better inside, you got to change something inside. So basically, the outside, now this is the next step. And the inside, you got to do something different. So I'm going to represent that by a triangle. The triangle represents you're doing something different inside. That's where the affirmation is. That's you're saying it inside, in your mind, out loud, the different techniques. But you're doing a, something different. You're doing something different inside. Now, you got a triangle inside and you got a rectangle outside. Up here, in your world, you have a, a, a rectangle outside and a rectangle inside. They match. They're equal. These aren't equal. And this gives you the energy to change. 
This is the change process. I'm doing it symbolically to begin with. Then slowly, as you continue saying your affirmation inside, the outside will begin to slowly bring information to you that your inside has found reference with the outside world. And therefore, over time, these, the outside world and the inside will equal each other. And when they do, when they're equal, your energy of change neutralizes. And, you, and this is where you're at. This is the stage where you're at until you decide to make another inside change. Maybe you don't need to. Maybe you want to. So now we have to talk about how you are going to word your uh, affirmation. So we have to talk a little bit about the subconscious mind. So let me take this off. Because I want you to get this. Your outside world right now and your inside world is the same. They don't contradict each other. You might not, from, from your standpoint inside, like your outside world, but it is exactly what it should be to match your belief system. So what are you changing with the affirmation? Your belief system. That's a long step away from saying, oh, I think happy thoughts and, and happy things will come to me. Don't quite work that way. It is true that what you think, your major thoughts, your dominant thoughts, will determine what your outside world is. That's true. But all those dominant thoughts are in your subconscious mind. And you don't know where the subconscious mind is or what it's thinking, or what its core belief system is. The only way you know is, what are you getting out of it? That's your outside world. If you don't like it, you got to change here. Now, the normal affirmation process says, oh, I'm going to change things out here. I'm going to manifest from this energy system out here and bring it inside. Now, this outside, and we talked about this in the past also, your outside world is a direct reflection of what you're doing inside. The affirmation process is to change what you're doing inside not to change the outside. You change what's going on inside, the outside will automatically change to match. That's what the universe does. It matches what you and your dominant thoughts and beliefs are doing. And it's doing a really good job, an excellent job at that. Except now you're saying, well, I don't want that. Who want this kind of stuff? I want to change. <clears throat> Don't blame the universe. You got to change your thoughts. This is all self-talk. Self-talk out here. All self-talk. It's what you're saying to yourself over and over and over in your sleep. When you go to the show, when you take a shower, when you go to work. Oh. I'm just going to read you one of the things, the last thing in my little, in my little booklet here. Because uh, it, it's from a very interesting person. And his name is Ralph Waldo Emerson. You become, you become what you think about all day. That's why affirmations work. 
when you think different thoughts and hear different self-talk over and over and over, you, you open up a wormhole into the subconscious mind and you change the programming. That's how, as a little child, you learned a lot of stuff. You did it over and over, whether it was uh, using a sippy cup when you were really young or learning how to use a spoon and not put it in your eye or your ear, but you finally figured out how to get it in your mouth. The way you did that was repeatedly over and over. Pick the spoon up, put it in the oatmeal, and find your way to your mouth. So those are all memories now. And enough memories, you got beliefs. You believe you can pick up a spoon and find your mouth. Your world's the same way. This is not by accident that you have the world that you have. So now you want to change it. You're not changing the world. Basically, the world don't care. You care. You got to change you. No, no, I just want to think happy thoughts and this will change. That's true, but you have to do it over and over and over many times. So let's talk about making uh, the affirmation. Uh, I When you before the age of seven, around six or seven is uh, in hypnosis we, we say the critical factor is in place. The critical factor is in place, which means you have gained enough information and beliefs that when new information comes through your senses, you are now to the point that you can discriminate based on your belief system and throw out which, what isn't important and accept what matches your belief system. Which matches your belief system. So there is, there, there is a filter at that point uh, based upon your beliefs. Your beliefs are in that young child's subconscious mind. And they will be based upon his core belief system, which was formed, most of it, before the age of three, and then the rest of it up to the point of the uh, critical factor being put in place at about six years old. You won't know it. But that's what you did. That's what you do. All the information that comes to you, you filter it. Now, a lot of times when I talk about this filtering system, uh, I think about, uh, a Salvation Army, or any organization that you contribute used articles to. So around here, there's the Salvation Army, uh, and there, there are other organizations, uh, Vincent de Paul, and other places. But you take your used goods to, the, to that location, that depot, and they take them in, and they basically dump them into a, a tote, a big tote. Say it's close. That's easy to look to look at. Uh, so I'm making a metaphor between how a person sorts and how your mind sorts based upon beliefs. So here you got this big tote, and there's a guy from the front end that comes back. I say from the front end because that's where they sell the used clothes at a reduced price. So he comes in and he looks at this big tote of clothes 
And he has to make the decision. Can I sell this in the front end or do I have to scrap it or, 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 or sell it for something else? So he's got this big tote and he goes through and he reaches in the tote and he picks up. He says, oh, now there's a nice shirt. I can sell that up in front. And he puts it over here. And he says, oh, there's a nice pair of pants. I can sell that. And he takes that over there. And he reaches in and he says, oh, here's a nice coat. Uh, oh, I can't sell this. It's got a big stain on it. So he puts it over there. And so your subconscious mind very quickly goes through the input information and saying, I can use that, I can use that, can't use that, can't use that, can use that, can use that, and then keeps the good stuff and the other stuff gone. So that's the filtering process that your subconscious mind or your critical factor, you pick it up and do you have a belief system around it? Do you have experience around this data? Okay, we save it. Doesn't mean nothing to me. Not on my belief system, not on uh, what I'm aware of, any past experience. Can't use it. So you sort through everything like that. So that's why, that's why now your subconscious mind hears a statement. And before the Critical factors in place, except at everything, except at everything. After the critical factor is in place, the filtering system is in place, everything gets filtered. And if it doesn't make sense, it gets thrown out. Now, in that process, by empirical data, negative information does not enter the subconscious mind easily gets rejected. Not all the time, most of the time. So if you had a, a uh, affirmation, now I have to think of one. I want to thinner. I want to be thinner. See, uh, we might we didn't think, well, that is a great affirmation. I do want that. Well, the problem is, from the subconscious mind standpoint, you already have that. You already have the want to be thinner. So no sense working on this because you've already got it. Well, yeah, but I'm not thinner. That's not what the affirmation says. It's not looking for you to be thinner. You're saying, I want to be thinner. And that's true. You do want to be thinner. But you're not. But you do want to be. Poor affirmation. Now, uh, because you already got it. You already have the want to be thinner. You just don't know how to do it. You think that the affirmation really says what it says. <coughs> no, most of the time it doesn't say what it says. It says what you think you'd like the conscious mind to experience. But that's not how the subconscious mind looks at the data. Now, I had, because I worked in, in uh, substance abuse inpatient. <clears throat> I'll take a little sip of tea there. And, uh, and so this guy comes in, we were doing group, and he says, uh, oh, I know all about affirm affirmations. I says, really? Tell me, tell me an affirmation that you have. And he says, okay. I'm not going 
going to drink. Drink. That should be drink. Today. One day at a time. I'm not going to drink today. And I says, well, that's wonderful. Why are you back in treatment? Oh, I, you know, I had a relapse and uh, you know, all kinds of reasons. And I said, let's look at your affirmation that you've been saying. He would take a cup of coffee every morning, go out on the porch with, I'm having tea, but he was having coffee. And he gets out on his porch and he looks at the sun and he says, I'm not going to drink today. Well, this is, a, this is a poor affirmation. Now, at first glance, it doesn't look bad. I'm not going to drink today. It goes right along with 12-step program. goes right along with one day at a time, all kinds of stuff like that. Not to the subconscious mind. I told you, after the filtering process, I was about six years old, it filters the statements differently. It doesn't input negative information. So to the subconscious mind, now you might say, well, that guy doesn't know what he's talking about. They're talking to me, talking about me. I'm not going to drink today. When the subconscious mind hears those words, which are symbols, words are symbols that, re that mean something else. They stand for something else. There's a negative word in there that will get filtered out like that as it goes through. The subconscious mind is working at 400 billion bits of data per second. You won't know it. You won't know that it was ever taken out. It's this word. It's not. Subconscious mind doesn't hear that. Negative. Part of its filtering system that it doesn't hear it. Now, you're left with the rest of the symbols, the rest of the words. What does it say now with this filtered out? I'm going to drink today. And that's what he did. He didn't recognize he was actually setting himself up to do that. Uh, an, another one going along with weight or being thin is I'm not going to have any dessert today. Again, not taking, not out. I'm going to have dessert today. I'm not going to eat more than three pieces of bread. It changes how the subconscious mind interprets the affirmation. So we have to talk about what is the process of making affirmations. So I got to go to my little booklet again because I can't remember everything. Uh, there are several steps in the making or creating of an affirmation. And it is spelled out in here. Now, before we get into that, I want to tell you why you are doing I'm going to erase these because these, these aren't right. These will they'll lead you down the wrong path. Okay.
You cannot affirm for other people. You can only affirm for yourself. You can't say, uh, I'm glad my uh, husband uh, uh, is happy about having my mother stay with us. You can't affirm for your husband or your wife or your kids. You can only affirm for you. So the affirmation has to be about you. It must be personal. You can only affirm for yourself. In writing your affirmation, you challenge, you challenge your current self-image of who you believe yourself to be. I said you were getting exactly what you should, so that's who you believe you are, and you have to challenge that. Thinking happy thoughts isn't the idea that I am challenging who I created. You create your world, you create you, and you can change you, and you can change your world. So, uh, only, only you can deliberately control the input of information and visualization that brings about the transformation in your subconscious self-image. See, your subconscious mind has a picture of who you are, who you believe yourself to be. And that's what you make the affirmation to push against. You are pushing against your inner self. Because your inner self don't see a problem. Your conscious mind does so. Okay. You should feel angst inside of you when you do this challenge. So in the beginning, it's going to seem like you're lying. I said that before, but that's basically what you're doing. Now, the affirmation must be posit positive. I'm not going to drink today is a negative statement. Why? It got negative words in it. It's not positive. Uh, I want to lose weight is a neutral statement. No action. Nothing's going to take place. You can say that for the rest of your life. Nothing's going to happen. So you have to make it positive. Write out your affirmation in a positive sentence. But just not thinking happy thoughts. You physically need to write down on paper. You can use a marker. You can use a, a, a crayon. You can use a whiteboard, but you always erase it. But, or some other thing. You can use a visualization board. Write word for word the affirmation that you're going to say. And don't say, oh, I don't have to. I'll remember. I know exactly what it should be, and, I, and I'll write it down. The words, write them down. They should be positive, and they should be personal. I. Start with that. You can always start with that. It must be in the present tense. Now that's why the one with want in it is going to be neutral. It's not in the present tense. You, you, you can want it in the present tense, but you're not going to get it in the present tense. You've got to reword it and take want out. And basically what you're saying is, I am thin. Now, you see the lie here? You're saying, I am thin, but your inside picture is, oh, I'm not thin. 
That's a lie. That's why you have to say it over and over and over and over and over. And as you say it over and over, as you say it over and over, you are causing your subconscious mind to search the atmosphere, search the surroundings, search the input data, and begin to filter the input data differently. When you filter the input data differently, you will begin to find shreds of evidence, little pieces that you are making improvements. And then you coalesce those together and you make them together and pretty soon they get bigger and they get bigger. And it's easier for the mind, the subconscious mind, to filter and it will tell you, oh, oh, look it, there's a pair of shoes, uh, there is a pair of uh, clothes that you couldn't wear two months ago and now I think they'll fit you. Why don't you try them on? And all kinds of things like that. Your subconscious mind is viewed as a very smart 10-year-old child. Very smart 10-year-old child. So what you're doing is you're writing an affirmation to excite a child to make changes, to enjoy something different. So you are writing uh, for yourself, personally. You are writing positively. And you're writing in the present tense as if you already, as if you have already met your goal. Where is the only time you can meet your goal? Right now, in the present moment. You can't meet your goal tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll be thinner. Tomorrow never comes, and you're never going to be thinner. You have to say it in the present tense, because now there is a disconnect between your picture and the symbolic, magical affirmation that you're saying. And so there's a discord. And the subconscious mind says, well, I don't know. Which way shall I go? What's, what's the most exciting way? Because he's a 10-year-old kid. So you have to put in the affirmation other things. First of all, you are indicating achievement as if you already have met your goal. And not that you're going to meet it tomorrow. You have to convince the subconscious mind to look for, well, this is my new picture. I have that picture now. I want uh, evidence that uh, it's in place. And it will, it'll go out and find evidence and then say, wow, this stuff really works. So you got to indicate uh, uh, achievement. Now, I would suggest if you're going to heavy into affirmation work, do not tell other people what you're, what you're working on. Because you'll do something goofy. You'll, you'll, for instance, if you're working on anger uh, and you want to reduce the anger that you have in your life, uh, and, and one of the affirmations might be, I am calm and serene at the end of the day and feel good about myself. And that's your affirmation. And you, and you tell your significant other, uh, or some friend, and then something happens, uh, you slip off. 
And then you start, you know, maybe saying some really interesting words around anger. And, and they'll come back and they'll say, well, that's not working. That affirmation isn't working good for you. And then, then you'll step back, oh, yeah, and, oh. And you'll put yourself down and you'll backtrack and you'll be worse off. So the best thing is when you're doing affirmation work, it's personal work. It's personal work. Don't let other people know. Be the peaceful warrior in this process of challenging your internal picture of yourself. So that's the, no competition. Don't, don't compare yourself to other people. Well, geez, Susie lost uh, 10 pounds. Wow, oh, God, I only lost two. Uh, but Charlie, uh, he didn't lose any weight, and at least I lost. See, the, no matter what you compare yourself to, there will be those that, will, that are far above you, and there will be those that are far below you. And so it does nothing except put stress in your life looking for to compare yourself with other people or other things or other situations. <clears throat> now, you're, you're trying to excite your subconscious mind. You're trying to excite that very smart 10-year-old child. You need action words. You need action words. I thrive on being happy and content in my life at work. I have to work in that a little bit, but that just come up. Uh, I'm excited about uh, being thinner. I use thinner because a lot of people are trying to lose weight. It's, but here's the thing. If you're trying to lose weight uh, and you're trying to do it through this process on the outside, once you love yourself on the inside, once you're happy on the inside, doesn't matter what your weight is and it will change. But if you remember your goal is to be happy. Sometimes in the affirmation process, the goal is to get a new job, a new relationship, a new uh, 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 a car, uh, a, a new boat. Uh, the idea that getting things from the outside is going to make you happy on the inside. But when you think about it, if you do get the new boat, and you're not happy on the inside, what good's the boat? But if you're happy on the inside, you can be happy with a new boat, or a new tricycle, or a new bike, or just being who you are. Happiness does not depend on what you're getting from the outside. It depends on what you're doing inside. And the inside will reflect the outside. In why? It's the law. It's the law of attraction that you are using these affirmations to fulfill. So you got to use active words, exciting words, that you're doing something. So, I love to, I thrive, I show, I'm excited. All those kind of words are very important to exciting oh, the subconscious mind. Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited too. Wow, let's change this picture to represent that excitement. 
What have we got to change in there? What's the programming you have to change so that you can be exciting? Now, emotional words. Emotional words are the sparkers that make the affirmation work. I know. And, and you need to add those. Joy, excitement, warmth, happiness, loving, enthusiastic. Because again, you're 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 trying to change. You're trying to entice the subconscious mind to change its program to see your world differently, to experience a different energy out into the world, which will reflect back in kind. Look at your conscious words. How much time is it? Holy jeez, we went a little bit over. Uh, uh, well, I, let's leave this here. Now, you've got basically all the steps. Not all of them, but you got most of them. Next time we get together, we'll go through some, uh, we'll, we'll go a quick review through these steps and get them all in, and then we'll talk about some other stuff and then it'll be time for you to start writing an affirmation. Now, if you want a copy of this, uh, 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 and, and you give me your email down below or someplace, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll email it to you. Uh, but keep in mind, I'll have your uh, mailing address, uh, and I might send you a... a uh, invite every time I put a new video out. But if you just want the information, uh, just state it in there and I won't put you on the list. So there's a lot to talk about and a lot more to do, and it's not quite what you think. You're in an illusion. But you think it's a real place. So until we get together again, be good to yourself, and we'll get back together. Subscribe below, and if you'd like this little little book, now I put it together some time ago. I might have to revise it, uh, but it does have the program that works, and there's more in it that we'll talk about next time we get together. Bye now.